Hey everyone, I'm Maverick Gill and welcome to the channel. I've just got back in this last week of the Caribbean Princess uh, search for the Northern Lights uh, with Princess Cruises and I wanted to give you today my uh, full review. Uh, I'm going to try and do it in about 15 minutes for you and cover all the main parts. So if you're thinking of going on Princess Cruises, particularly the Caribbean Princess and particularly uh, an Arctic cruise or a cold weather cruise, a uh, Northern Lights cruise in our case, then uh, hopefully this will help you. Um, if you're an existing subscriber, thank you very much. And if you aren't, then uh, maybe take an opportunity to uh, subscribe and you won't miss any of the content I've got coming up over the next couple of months. Uh, we are heading at the weekend off on the Disney Dream Ship. It's our first time on a Disney ship, so I'm really excited about that. And we are heading over on a transatlantic, so actually going to be on the Disney ship for two whole weeks, and then we're staying in Florida for three weeks. So we'll be coming from the parks, I'm doing three hotel reviews, um, as well as, of course, full ship review. And for the first time, uh, I'm gonna try and do a daily vlog from the actual Disney Dream ship. So Wi-Fi permitting, uh, I'm gonna put something up every day so you can um, experience to what I'm experiencing in terms of being maybe a first time on a Disney ship or first time on a Disney on the Disney Dream. Uh, try and give you some of that experience every day. So if you don't wanna miss that, hit the subscribe button. But let's get back to uh, the Caribbean Princess and um, just cover off uh, what we thought of that. Did we like it? Um, the embarkation was a bit of a bad start, I have to say. It was a complete debacle. We received a notice the uh, evening before we were cruising saying that it was going to be a delayed departure because they had viruses on the ship, in particular gastrovirus. Uh, everybody calls it the norovirus, but I'm not totally sure it was specifically that. But they'd had this virus issue on four or five crew sailings before we got on. So we were a little bit aware um, that this could still be an issue. But yeah, they literally told people the evening before, it wasn't a problem to us, we were staying just around the corner and we did pick up the email. But of course, a lot of people are coming from quite far, from America, uh, overseas, and um, they didn't have time to change any of their travel plans. So we ended up with this, uh, queues everywhere outside of the terminal. Um, so it took us a bit of time to get in, there were no seats put out, so people with uh, accessibility issues um, were maybe struggling a bit. Um, although some did were able to sit inside the terminal if you got there early enough. But we were generally outside, queuing up. There were three queues at the at the end. Um, it wasn't massively cold, and it wasn't massively warm, so and it wasn't raining particularly. So um, that was a plus. Eventually, we got in, and then we were sat in our groups, ready for check in. Uh, and, but there were no announcements, so it took them a while to get this going, so we didn't really know what was going on. Um, however, once they did get that going, it did flow uh, reasonably smoothly, and we got on the ship, I think, about two o'clock, half past one, two o'clock, um, but we didn't get our room till about 5 p.m., so that was uh, delayed as well. So it wasn't a great start. Um, yeah, obviously they had an issue, wanted to get the ship clean, but communication could have been a bit better. Um, so I think uh, quite a few people were uh, a little bit um, grumpy about that. Now, the food. So, uh, on the Caribbean Princess, you have got the main dining rooms, of which there are three main dining rooms. You have got the grill and the buffet upstairs, the ice, and the ice cream and coffee. And of course, you've got some additional dining options. Now, the additional dining options were a little bit limited. Um, the Wheelhouse, I think, was a lovely um, restaurant. Uh, but there weren't too many on the ship, uh, and they're reasonably reasonably pricey as well. But I think more the, the limited choice. So if you're somebody who likes your additional dining options, I think on the Caribbean Princess it's uh, a little bit limited. We didn't use the main dining rooms very much, and that's partly because I guess our first experiences were pretty poor. The food was lukewarm. Uh, the service, we got a bit unlucky with our waiting staff because um, they were quite grumpy and didn't really seem too pleased to, to see us, um, which is very rare that that happens. Um, however, of course, this is skewed by, you know, it's a very much an individual experience on a cruise ship. 
uh, in that you could you could have been in that same restaurant had a fantastic waiting team and, and you would have had a different experience so but that was ours um, however speaking to other people they did find the food a little bit average there sometimes not 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 warm and the service uh, just okay upstairs in the buffet and the grill areas uh, quite the opposite um, the service was outstanding um, really really good um, it was very busy at times um, and sometimes could be a challenge for people to get seats I think we were generally okay because we found a little secret place at the back of the ship near the near the aft of the ship um, which is where planks and steamers additional dining options are every other evening and generally it was a bit quiet down there people didn't seem to to realize there was another um, buffet eating area there so you know if you're on that ship head down there it's generally a little bit quieter particularly for breakfast but also for other meals as well the food was a reasonable variety in there um, we enjoyed we enjoyed that the grill with the burgers and this pizza slice that was all good the ice cream um, i used a lot of the additional coffee options i'm not a great instant coffee drinker i'll be honest so yeah i had a fair few cappuccinos from up there and it was generally quite up there because this was a cold weather cruise and it was our first cold weather cruise so um, i'll tell you later what, what, what i think about cold weather cruises but so food food was just okay if you want to compare with another princess ship i did in august we got off the regal princess so you could compare my review there with here um and it's just to give you um, a little bit of a, a bit of a yardstick so it was it was okay but yeah buffet was a lot better um for us and the grill areas were excellent as well uh, now service generally we found to be very good the staff were very friendly and very helpful with that exception of the main dining room uh, i'll give you one particular example uh Amanda had mentioned that um, the children loved the hot chocolate on the Regal Princess and they didn't have any on this ship. Um, about a day later, one of the restaurant managers, Joseph, turned up at our table. He located us through the medallions that, that they give you and he brought, he said, he asked us what hot chocolate they liked um, and he said he would order some in and we thought, well, okay, maybe five or six days' time, it might, this might turn up. The very next day, I don't know how he did it because it was a sea day, he came with a big giant bag of Nesquik hot chocolate and he gave it to us. Um, so that was absolutely fantastic. I mean, that's just customer service at its, uh, its very best. So service in general on the Caribbean Princess, can't, couldn't really fault it. it. They were very, very good. Um, I know some people had had a few issues in the future cruise um, department. Uh, we didn't use that on this occasion. So this is a little bit of hearsay that there's been some negative feedback on there. Generally, our experience, service cost ship, very, very good. Um, and that one shining example that I mentioned. Uh, now, I've got to mention the ship condition. The Caribbean Princess is seems to be being held together with sticky back plastic. Um, the lifts were permanently um, under maintenance uh, and they were shut quite a bit. The, um, we had a, in our hallway leading to our cabin, hole in the ceiling with a leak and a bucket underneath, and that was there for a couple of days. It does need a bit of tender loving care. It is going into dry dock. So if you are going to the Caribbean Princess, don't panic. Um, I believe it's going into dry dock. So hopefully some of these issues should be resolved. And it does make me wonder, we had a major um, emergency issue, which was quite scary when we were on the ship, when it, we were um, moored in Tromso, sheltering from a storm, and the mooring rocks broke. And because I think we were using harbour power, as ships are being encouraged to do, the engines, I don't believe were on, we went adrift, and the ship tilted, was tilting slightly. It was pretty scary for, um, for some moments, and it does make you wonder um, whether the fact that it was it's due to go in and maybe does need some care whether those ropes could have been could have been better i don't know um it's one of those things it was sorted out within half an hour it was pretty scary at the time um, captain tells us we were at no point in any danger so i guess we've got to um, we've got to believe that but it didn't feel it at the time i'll be honest um so generally the ship condition it does need it does need a bit of work i think but it is a beautifully designed ship it's great to look at the swimming pools um, they have two kind of big main pools up the top, but they're separated. Unlike when we were on the Regal, the one thing we didn't like, it was all together. So in this one, you've got one pool where the big screen is, and then you've got a separate pool which is a bit quieter. So if you don't want the noise of a Dell in concert for the fifth time, um, or Adam Lambert for the seventh time, then 
you know, you can go to the quite a bit as well. So it's quite, that was quite nicely designed, um, I think. But it is going into drawing dock, I believe, imminently. Um, kids clubs, now this was interesting. There were only 10 children on the entire ship, including R2. It was term time in the UK. Um, our kids are home educators, so that doesn't affect us. Uh, but it was so they'd been on the Regal in August where we'd had I don't know, 100, maybe 150 children on there to 10. They made a couple of friends though, which is all they need. Um, and actually, when they, they went to the kids' clubs to hang out and do, do some of the activities there, and they absolutely loved the kids' club workers, said so they were fantastic. Um, the facilities were great there. There's also a family area where we can go with your children and you can play there's a carnival game, there's um, air hockey, there's table football. So that was really good and that's up on, up on the, the, you know, the higher decks, I think round about deck uh, 16, 16, 17. Um, so they really enjoyed that. The, uh, now the ports and the excursions, um, despite the cold weather, okay, I'm gonna be honest, I'm not a cold weather person. I knew this was gonna be a cold weather cruise. It wouldn't be my first choice. But we did it. I wanted to go across the Arctic Circle. Um, despite the cold weather, the ports were lovely. Um, we spent, ended up spending three days in Tromsø because of the um, stormy conditions we had, so we couldn't go up to Alta. Uh, Tromsø was lovely, had a great time there. There's lots of cultural experiences. We went to a glass blowing um, factory. There are museums there. The Troll Museum is very, very popular there um, as a hard rock cafe, lots of different things. Yeah, I mean, you can see that in a couple of my um, other videos that I've done, um, if you want to see a bit more of that experience on the channel. Uh, and Trondheim was very nice too, really enjoyed walking around Trondheim um, and the Lofoten Islands. Uh, now, if you, at the Lofoten Islands, if you want to do something, you need to book an excursion. Uh, there isn't much there, it's a beautiful, place to look at him. It's a bit like entering the world of Jurassic Park with the um, expecting dinosaurs to come out somewhere. But the um, it's beautiful, but there isn't a lot to do. And it's a tender port generally, so we would we have to, to tender in. Um, you can go for a little walk, but there isn't much there. So just be aware of that. And then on the way back down south towards Southampton, we stopped at Allison, um, which was possibly our favorite stop actually, really beautiful place. Uh, and we really enjoyed our visit there. So the ports were good. There's lots of um, fun excursions heading off in search of the Northern Lights. Um, there's seeing husky dogs. Um, and some people did their own thing as well. I mean, there was people that drove off in, up to Finland to stay in glass-topped igloos uh, to see the Northern Lights. So there's loads of things that you can do, um, but be aware that the weather is um, a little bit chilly and we had snow, um, which was quite exciting for us. Or to have, a, have the snow on the ship. Um, that was fun. Uh, the technology on the ship, the Wi Fi, I've got to say, you know, so I, I do vlogs, the Wi Fi was brilliant. Uh, we paid about $300 for the family of four for our devices, but I had no problems with uploading my videos. I'd seen a couple of vloggers recently who had a few issues, wasn't um, in the time for uploading videos, etc. But um, actually, it was very good. Um, on the ship, so um, can't, couldn't fault the technology, which I think is now Starlink on many of the Princess ships, uh, which has certainly improved things on P&O and seems to be doing so here as well. Now, entertainment, which is obviously a big important thing to a lot of people. The entertainment was a little bit average on the Caribbean Princess. The theatre shows, now the theatre, we have fight, fighting in the theatre. The theatre is too small for the people on, the amount of people on the ship and the demand for the theatre. There's two shows in the evening, an early one at about 7.30, and then there's a kind of 9.30, 10 o'clock showing. Um, and it is absolutely rammed in there. People are getting in over an hour before. Um, there's people queuing down the aisles, hoping that some of the premier customers with reserved seating, um, that they can get their seat because those seats are given up five minutes before the performance. That causes a bit of a rush. Um, and because of all the stress of all of this, people, some people um, start, um, I guess, losing their patience with it all. And we've had a couple of evenings where it kicked off big time. Um, again, if you look on one of my um, other vlogs, we've probably could see a little bit of the action there. We actually had um, somebody uh, evicted from the theatre because it had gone, gone, up, gone completely over the top. And I saw this on previous Caribbean Princess uh, cruises. 
as well on some other vloggers um, who've put videos out there that we'd had similar things, so they know about this. So it's something that needs sorted. The quality of the entertainment was also pretty average overall. General feedback I got from other people um, was that it was just okay. I mean, um, and that's about it. So that was a bit disappointing. The amount of entertainment around the ship was also fairly limited. We had quite a bit of trivia. Um, I did enjoy with the kids doing a bit of beanbag toss challenge and uh, 10 pin bowling in the um, atrium. Um, but it was quite, quite limited, I have to say. So yeah, entertainment again, it was just average on this particular cruise. Oh yeah, and, okay, I would, I would just mention, okay, so there, there was virus on the ship, it was still on the ship. Um, we had COVID, we had gastroviruses. People get really worried about this thing, and I would say, if that overly worries you, then maybe cruising is not right for you, because um, it's quite commonplace that there are viruses on ships. We had a particular uh, ongoing incident on um, the Caribbean over the last five or six cruises where it was significant. And I think earlier in the year, there was a similar situation on the p and Ventura, um, but it does happen. Uh, we've had norovirus two or three times ourselves. We've caught COVID on a ship. Um, and like it, when you get ill, it's not fun, is it? But um, don't let it put you off unless you have um, significant health issues to be uh, particularly concerned about. But it, it, it is, it's, it's a risk you take getting on you in an, you are in an enclosed environment where viruses can spread quite quickly and we had it again on the ship. Um, so hopefully when it goes into dry dock that will clean that all up and um, it will be lesser in the future but um, it does happen. So my five, I'm going to say my five high, I'm going to actually start with the low lights. My four low lights of the cruise um, would be the, well three, I've got it three, three low lights would be the embarkation set us off in a bad way because it was just, it was just terrible. I mean, that's all you can say. It's, a, it's the only time it's ever happened to us in 20 cruises that it was that bad. One of those things didn't work out very well, wasn't organized very well, is what it is. Um, number two, um, the weather for me, um, I'm not a cold weather cruiser, I think I've learned that. Um, I prefer the warm weather on a cruise ship so you can fully utilize the outdoor areas uh, a lot more. Um, and the biggest low light was probably the ship emergency because we were, we were right there in Club Fusion looking out the window when the ship started to tilt and then the rope snapped and all the rest of it. Um, I did a mini vlog on this um, if you're more interested in that. Uh, and it was a bit scary when you got the kids, particularly when you got the kids with you. Um, in that moment, it felt like it was out of control. That was the main thing. Um, which is not what you want for about 20 minutes. It didn't feel like there was any order. There was no communication, didn't. And it felt like we were just completely adrift and what was going to happen. Um, and of course we had hundreds of people worried on the port who couldn't get back on. And we had a gangway in the water, um, drifting away in the water. So thank goodness people weren't on, weren't on that. So um, didn't particularly enjoy that, I have to say. So that was probably my biggest low light. In terms of the highlights, um, I've got the four main ones, um, the cost actually was a great deal for us. On the, we booked on the Regal, so if you are on a cruise and you want to book another cruise, check out what the deals they have on board. They have a special um, summary sheet on Princess of all the special deals they've got going. And I'll tell you, for a family of four, we paid £1,600 for this cruise. So that was fantastic. So for value, it was great value. Um, the ports were really good. Really enjoyed the ports. You don't need to book any excursions. You can just go off on your own and have fun. Um, if that's what you want to do. There's some great excursions if you want to book them, but if you do want to do your own independent thing, then, you know, it's absolutely fine to do it. Um, the service and the staff, once again on Princess, it's a common theme, uh, were really good overall. We had the same experience on the Regal, and um, of course, the Northern Lights was the absolute highlight. We saw them twice. There was one really exciting night when we were up at the top of the ship at one o'clock in the morning, there's about 300 passengers up there, and we're all quite excited um, seeing the Northern Lights. We got some great pictures of that, um, and that's what some people went for. You know, um, it was a book at this thing for many people, and it was brilliant to be able to see that on the ship. So that was probably the number one highlight for me. Overall, really enjoyed the cruise. Um, it's a common theme with Princess that the service has been very good. There's a good atmosphere on the ships. Um, this was slightly different to the Regal we did in August at the Org. That was a lot more families on it. 
So there's another slightly older profile on this ship, um, possibly because of the time of year, maybe because of the itinerary as well, but we enjoyed it very much. I do hope that when it goes into dry dock, they look closely and maybe some of the issues get it spruced up a little bit and look closely at this mooring emergency because that shouldn't happen. Um, it is a bit of a worry that with this use of harbour power that it potentially puts the ship more at risk if their engines aren't on. I have a sailor friend who told me that um, when they are doing engineering works, they're like, they always make sure they're on ship power when in harbour, but I think from an environmental perspective, ships are being pushed to use harbour power, I believe. So hopefully they will, they will look at that and um, we won't get a situation like that again. Now, um, at the, in just a couple of days time, heading off on the Disney Dream. So thanks for listening today. I hope you enjoyed the review. So we're heading off on the Disney Dream for two weeks. First time on a Disney cruise ship. Can't wait. Very excited. We think we leave on Sunday. So going to be reviewing the ship, ship tour, but I'm also going to be doing hopefully a daily vlog if the Wi-Fi works properly, um, which we'll be able to see on the channel. And then we're getting to the Fort Lauderdale where we're then heading up on a train. So I'll show you the train from Fort Lauderdale up to Orlando, where we're staying in three different hotels, Disney property and um, a couple of Disney partner hotels. So we get all of that and um, a lot of restaurants as well. So um, if you want to see some of that, then um, click subscribe if you get the chance. And always grateful for our new subscribers and please engage in the chat. Always love to talk to people if you've got any questions. Happy to help if I can. But for now, from Maverick Hill, I've got to go and pack the rest of my bags. And as you can probably see, the house is completely crazy. For those of you interested, I will update on where we are with the whole property development piece. But this is my new studio, which obviously needs liquor paint desk and everything. I've currently got two chairs in here and a, a light. So but it's going to be great when it's all, all finished. So yeah, it's a crazy life. Carpe diem. Make sure um, you live it to the full, guys. And I'll um, talk to you soon. Take care.